Since that time, Darian has been involved in publishing over 30 blogs, but is now active on three of those as founder and editor. And those three, three are digitalphotographyschool.com, problogger.net, and twittip.com. Please welcome Darian. Thank you. Thanks for coming out today. I'm here today with Chris Garrett, and Chris is actually one of the co-authors of, of this book. I don't know where he is, but um, if you see him afterwards, he'd be more than happy to chat with you. And you could be one of the only people in the world who've met, met us in the same room, because Chris and I wrote this book together, having never met. And in fact, we only spoke once on the phone during the whole process of the book. Um, it was a bit of a surreal experience to, to be writing a book full stop, let alone with someone on the other side of the world. The book really, um, the first edition of the book really came out of both Chris and my experience of having written a lot about blogging. Blogging about blogging is a little bit sad, I know, but we have written thousands of archive posts about the topic and yet still had people coming up to us and emailing us asking, how do you do it? Um, we want a, a concise guide. So really, the ProBlogger, the book came out of our archives and it was a, a logic, more logically sequenced, updated version of our blogs. Uh, we released it back in 2006, and uh, sorry, 2008, uh, two years ago, and of course a lot's happened since then, which uh, meant we wanted to update it, and the update of the book actually comes out next month on, on April 11th. There's been three major changes between the first and second edition, for those of you who have read it already. The, the first change is we deleted a whole chapter, uh, a, a chapter on blog networks. Um, not because blog networks are completely irrelevant, but we were writing for, for beginner bloggers who wanted to start making their first money off blogs. And blog networks have, the majority of them have changed in the way that they do their business and they're a little less accessible for, for entry bloggers to actually get a job with a blog network. So we, we took that chapter out and added two others. Um, firstly, we added, or Chris wrote a, a chapter on social media and blogging. Um, social media has obviously come into the space a lot more heavily and uh, a lot of bloggers are now using it to build their brand, to drive traffic, and to directly monetize as well. And so Chris explores some of those issues in that, that new chapter. And the, the last chapter that we added to the book is now the last chapter of the book and it's, it's about taking your blog to the next level and it's a case study, uh, case study of, what, of one of my blogs, Digital Photography School. And what I'd like to do in this session is give you a bit of a taste of that case study and walk you through just a part of what I wrote in, in it um, to give you a bit of a taste for some of what um, Firstly, how to make money from a blog, but also uh, a little bit of a taste of the um, new book itself. So for those of you who don't know Digital Photography School, it's actually my largest blog. Uh, it's probably about five or six times bigger than ProBlogger itself. Uh, a lot of people come to ProBlogger and think that's what I do. It's actually my secondary focus. DPS is uh, the main focus of what I do. Uh, just a few stats on, on where it's at. It's four years old now, so it's kind of, it's, it's not the biggest blog in the world and I've never claimed it to be, but it's enough to live off um, and, and to live reasonably well. Um, so it's been around for two years now, DPS, and I've broken in the case study it down into two um, main segments of time. The first two years of the blog um, I call the launch period. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, that's a bit crazy launching a blog in two years, but that's the approach I've taken. Because a blog, uh, to get successful and to make enough money to live off, you need to actually look at it as a long-term thing. And so the first two years were really about getting it off the ground and building some strong foundations. And I wrote about four different foundations in those first uh, two years and none of them were monetization. I didn't start with money. I started with these four things. The first one was content. Um, a blog obviously needs something on it, whether it be video, audio, or written, uh, the written word. And the first two years were largely about producing the most useful, helpful content that I could. I defined my audience very early on as being beginner photographers. Anyone who had a camera, um, who was not using it to its potential. So someone who was taking bad photos was who I wanted to connect with. And so I began to write content for that type of person. And I have to admit, every post that I wrote for the first year, I was somewhat embarrassed to write because I thought it was just too easy. I, I remember writing one of the first posts was how to hold the digital camera. Uh, and I hovered over the publish button for quite a while as I thought, no, this is just too easy. Everyone knows how to hold a digital camera. I published it and the next day it hit the front page of Dig, it was picked up on Lifehacker, and I discovered the power of writing 
for beginners. I discovered the power of writing things that you take for granted yourself. And a lot of people ask me, how do you come up with ideas to write about? Well, I go back to the beginning of when I started learning about a topic and, and write about the things that I've just forgotten that I even knew. Um, so writing um, content that solves problems was the first thing that I did. And I started off writing three posts a week and gradually increased that to seven posts a week. It's about quality, but it also is about quantity. Uh, if you write one post a week, you end up with 52 posts over a year. And that's not many doorways into your blog. It can be enough if you're writing the kind of content that gets passed around. But if you're writing seven posts a week, you obviously end up with 365 doorways into your blog. Write two posts a day, you're over 700 doorways into your blog. That's 700 pages that Google can send traffic to you from um, that can be picked up and passed around on Twitter uh, and that can go viral. So it's about quality content, number one, and quantity as well. Number two is promotion. Uh, some bloggers believe that you can write great content and people will come. And whilst there's some truth to that, if you already have some readers to go and pass that content around, in the early days of your blog, it's not enough to build it and expect that people will come. You need to also put yourself out there. You need to seed that content onto the web. And so in the first two years, I did a lot of seeding, sneezing out my content every time I published it. Um, I, I, promoted my content asking two questions. Number one, what, who is the reader that I want to read my blog? And number two, where are they gathering online already? Where are they already gathering in communities that I can begin to participate in? So I defined my, my reader as the person with a camera who's not using it very well, and I began to go and find them. The number one place that I looked was Flickr. Flickr obviously by definition is a photo sharing site. People have cameras. And if you look at the most recent photos rather than the most interesting photos, you'll discover that 99% of them have no idea how to take a photo. <laughs> so I began to participate in that community. We started a group. I began an account there. I began to connect with others there who already had, an, had accounts. Um, I, I started to interact on other sites, other photography sites, although most of their readers were already more advanced than I was looking for, so I didn't spend a lot of time interacting with photography sites until later. But I began to interact in Dig and stumble upon sites who have a sort of a tech flavour, a how-to flavour, and began to interact with sites like Lifehacker, who allow you to submit a post to them for them to link to. I think that's pretty cool as a new blogger. I found that they would link to about one in three of the posts that I sent to them. And they have a massive audience. And often they would then spark social media events, like on Dig and, and um, getting passed around on Twitter. So I began to promote my content. I built as much community as I could on the site very early on. We started a Flickr group very early and that did pretty well. When we got to a thousand members of that group, we transitioned them over onto our site to a forum. So we have a blog and a forum working side by side. At first I thought the forum was where the community stuff would happen, but what I, I discovered is that forum users and blog users are actually two different types of people. Some of them overlap, some of them did both. But a lot of people were actually just in one kind of space. That's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> that must be a very important point. Um, Attention. Attention. An emergency has been reported. All occupants walk to the nearest airway exit and walk down to your assigned re entry floor or main lobby. Do not use the elevator. Walk safe. to the nearest airway. Do not use the elevator. That sucks. 